he was a, a high thinker and um, a, a guy that was always 30 steps ahead of whatever the curve was. I was recording the album myself in my own studio. So the way I looked at it, I owned the work because I paid for it. And I did all the work, I created it, so I felt like it should belong to me. That said, the um, companies felt otherwise. Title was standing alone as the only streamer to have access to the Icon's music. The Prince's estate is now suing Jay-Z's Rock Nation for copyright infringement. It's been eight years since we lost the legendary Prince, but his fight against the music industry is still as relevant as ever. In fact, rumor has it that Prince's public war against the big labels led to his tragic demise, and his longtime friend Cat Williams is now making some bombshell allegations, seemingly suggesting that Prince's death wasn't an accident like the official narrative claims. Meanwhile, fans are pointing out that Jay-Z allegedly tried to take advantage of Prince and trick him into giving ownership of his music to title, which later led to Prince's estate filing a lawsuit against Rock Nation. And it looks like Cat Williams has something to say about all this. Apparently, Cat doesn't believe that Prince died in the way it was told to the public, and he just might have the receipts to prove it. Um, it shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. Over the years, there's been a ton of speculation surrounding the untimely deaths of music legends like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Prince, and several others because all of them openly criticized big record labels. And when it comes to Prince, he took some drastic measures to break free from the label's control. To give you some context, Prince signed his first deal with Warner Music in 1977 when he was just 18 years old. His album 1999 propelled him into fame, and by 1984, with the release of Purple Rain and its accompanying blockbuster movie, Prince skyrocketed to superstardom. And this is when Prince decided to leverage his fame to demand greater control over his career. In 1985, he started his own record label, Paisley Park Records, and over the next eight albums, he enjoyed an unparalleled creative and commercial streak. However, the golden era eventually came to an end, and Prince's relationship with Warner Music started to turn sour in the early 90s. In 1993, they had a public falling out over financial matters matters and artistic control, and in a bold move to expose Warner, Prince began appearing in public with the word slave written on his face. In another act of defiance, Prince famously changed his name to an unpronounceable symbol, leaving fans and media to refer to him as Symbol, Squiggle, or the artist formerly known as Prince. I had searched deep within my heart and spirit, and I wanted to uh, uh, make a change and move to a new plateau in my life. And one of the ways in which I did that was to change my name. It sort of divorced me from the past and all the hang-ups that go along with it. Prince explained what those hang-ups were in another interview, saying, Warner Bros. took the name, trademarked it, and used it as the main marketing tool to promote all the music that I wrote. The company owns the name Prince. I became merely a pawn used to produce more money for Warner Brothers. Prince's rebellion against Warner coincided with English singer George Michael's own struggle to break free from his contract with Sony, which he referred to as professional slavery. This put the the record labels in a shaky position and they were facing a major PR crisis. And while Prince couldn't fully cut ties with Warner, he started churning out albums in quick succession so he could fulfill the contractual obligations as fast as possible. They are what they are and I am what I am and eventually I realized that those two systems aren't going to work together, Prince explained. The deeper you get into that well, the darker it becomes. Warner eventually pulled the plug on distributing Prince's Paisley Park records, so Prince decided to establish a fresh imprint called NPG. G Records. His primary objective was to get full control of his creative output, and he secured a deal with EMI Records, which offered him the freedom to drop albums on his own schedule. However, Prince continued to openly criticize big labels, and he even went as far as to claim that record labels are useless and shouldn't exist. During this period, Prince embarked on a label-hopping journey, releasing music through NPG in collaboration with other major labels such as Columbia, Universal Music Group, Arista, and even circling back to Warner at times. Meanwhile, he kept publicly encouraging artists to protect their autonomy and explore different partnerships instead of tying themselves to a single label. Well, it's not your game. You didn't make the rules, so everything comes hard. And as long as you're signed to a contract, you're going to take a minority share of the winnings. A select few of us will do well. The majority will not. So as a people, will be considered a minority. But stop, let's take a moment and look at yourselves. 
There's nothing minor about you. But at one point, Prince became so disillusioned with the music business that he said he wished he had chosen another career. He told the LA Times, if I knew the things I know now before, I wouldn't be in the music industry. In another famous quote from his interview with Rolling Stone, Prince said, if I can't do what I wanna do, what am I? When you stop a man from dreaming, he becomes a slave. That's where I was. I don't own Prince's music. If you don't own your masters, your master owns you. In 2007, Prince made another bold move to take control over his art in the internet era and announced his plan to take legal action against YouTube, eBay, and the Pirate Bay for unauthorized use of his music. Meanwhile, he also removed his music from all streaming platforms except for Jay-Z's Tidal. Prince allowed Tidal the exclusive rights to stream his album Hit and Run. However, after Prince's death in 2016, his estate filed a federal lawsuit against Rock Nation, claiming that Tidal continued to stream Prince's back catalog despite Prince only giving them permission to stream one album for 90 days. But that didn't stop Jay-Z from bragging about owning Prince's masters, even though Prince never left his masters to title. Just one month after Prince's death, Jay-Z dropped a verse on Fat Joe and Remy Ma's All The Way Up remix, where he raps, Prince left his masters where they safe and sound, we never gonna let the elevator take him down. What's also a bizarre coincidence is that Prince died almost exactly two years after he regained control of his master from Warner Music. On April 18th, 2014, news broke that the ownership of Prince's iconic catalog would be returned to the artist himself. And almost exactly two years later, on April 21st, 2016, Prince was found dead in an elevator at his Paisley Park compound. Prince's death was ruled accidental OD, and according to the police report, Prince believed he was taking Vicodin to alleviate pain, but it turned out that the pills were counterfeit and laced with fentanyl. Hours after announcing a decision not to file charges in Prince's death, authorities released documents and video of his last days. Among the evidence, pictures from Paisley Park on the day Prince died showing pills and a Bayer bottle authorities say contain the deadly counterfeit Vicodin. Unfortunately, the subject counterfeit Vicodin pills are an exact imitation of real Vicodin pills, but the counterfeit pills contain the potentially deadly opioid Fentanyl. However, similar to the skepticism surrounding Michael Jackson's death, Prince's fans questioned the official story, with many speculating that someone knowingly gave him laced pills. Several individuals in the industry also expressed doubts about the official narrative, with Kanye West even suggesting that both Michael Jackson and Prince were killed and that he almost suffered the same fate. Kanye posted a photo of Prince with the word slave on his face and wrote, let's get it big bro, you and Michael passed so we can live. And now, Cat Williams is allegedly gearing up to do another explosion interview and show receipts to prove that Prince was taken out by the industry higher-ups. These reports are still unconfirmed. However, word on the street is that Cat will talk about how Prince knew his life was in danger, and much like Michael Jackson, he allegedly told his friends that once he regained ownership of his masters, he put a target on his back. As for Prince's fans, they're saying they never believed in the official narrative in the first place. Someone said, Prince went against the industry powers that be once he gained back the ownership of his musical masters. The record industry could no longer profit from his creative genius, and all of a sudden he's a drug addict and died due to an overdose? Yeah, right. And another fan wrote, yeah, one lives a drug-free life and dies with a reputation as a junkie. It kind of doesn't make sense. Now his management is fighting the family for his estate. He's worth more dead than alive. But what's your take on Prince's death and his battle with big record labels? Do you think there might be a connection between the two? Leave your comments below and make sure you catch this next video.